Hello, in this video I want to explain the difference between white box testing and black box testing. Let's start with black box testing. When you have black box testing, you don't look at the code, you act like you don't know the code if you write the tests. So you only look at the specification when you write the tests. For example, let's check the specification. The specification says we should calculate sine x for a number between 0 and pi. So what tests could we write? We could write a test for sine 0 and check if it's 0. We could write a test and check if sine pi is 0. And we could write a test that says or checks if sine of 3 is some value I don't know. This is black box testing. We don't know how sine is implemented so we don't know what should we test if we want to make the code fail. And now just to enhance your dictionary we have two classes of tests here. These two tests are boundary value tests. Why? Because we have a boundary written here and they test these boundary values. And here we have a equivalence value test. I'm not sure about the word. Equivalence partitioning if you check out Wikipedia. That basically says if you have one boundary here and we have one boundary here, then you have a lot of values in between and you just pick the random one. And that's an equivalence partitioning test. Maybe. I'm not sure about the word here. The fact although is indeed. Anyway, I hope you now understood what a black box test is. Now let's check out what is a white box test. White box test is you can look at the code and you do look at the code when you write your tests. So for example, let's say we have some code over here. We have a start. We have various conditions so we can go through various paths and someday eventually we will go to the end. What tests can we imagine? There are some tests written in Wikipedia. I will just go to through three of them. Let's start with the statement cover coverage. Statement coverage, sorry. This coverage says that you should at least go through every statement once. So one test could be like this. But we didn't we didn't cover the D and G statements, so we do another test and we go this way this time. Now we covered all statements and we have statement coverage. Perfect. We also can have branch coverage. That means for all conditions you should go to either side, so to the true side and to the false side at least once. This is pretty similar to what we did before. Let's start with the A. We go here at first and then we go through and go this way. So the branch B and E are both going to the left side. We did not go to the right side yet. So we have to write another test. We go through A and go to B, uh, to D and G, sorry, English letters hard. And finally we come to the end. So now we went through every branch that is in the code. Basically you can also, I think, I'm not sure about this one, as you saw at the end we in every case we have to go here to the right side. So I think you can argue if the first test that just goes this way is really necessary. If you know anything further about that just let me know in the comments please. And at the end we have path coverage. It's my favorite. You try to cover every combination of the paths that are possible. So let's start with the most easiest one, this one. And then we go with this one. You've seen this before. And we go again on this side just to go on the right side here this time. Let's check out some green. We go to the right side and go to the right side. You saw this path before. And finally, basically the same, we have to go to the left side. So we have five different paths that we have to check. In real life, this means you have a lot of paths that you can actually, a lot of combinations that you can actually walk through. So this is not realistic. And just a note at the end, what did we learn of all these tests or all the others that are out there? They do not help us make a perfect software because even if we have statement coverage, branch coverage, and path coverage, we can still 
hit bugs. Why? Simple example. I will leave the thinking up to you though. Imagine we have this program over here. We have some branches. Let's say this is the yes part and this is the no part. And we want to make path coverage by setting A to either minus one or one and C to minus one or one. When we do that, we have four tests and we have the full coverage, the full path coverage. But then we didn't enter the bug that happens when A is bigger than zero and C is minus five. And we also didn't catch the bug that happens when A is smaller than zero and C is two. If you don't get it, just think of it for a while. And you will find out that even if we use the path coverage, the branch coverage and the statement coverage, we have to be really lucky to find the bug that happens either here or here. But besides that, I hope you understood what white box testing is about. So you really look at the code and let's just skip or switch over to Wikipedia and you can do like a lot of more stuff. Just check out the white box testing Wikipedia page and you find a lot of coverage stuff. But but I will not talk about it here. So thanks for watching. If you have any comments, if you have any questions, write the write in comments below and make sure to read the video description. I do not add comments inside the video. So when I make corrections, they are all in the video description. So please check it out. Thanks for watching.